Today we're talking the Legendary Heroes Trails games, otherwise known as Giseki in Japan. And this series has been going on for quite a while, and I just recently started playing these games since December of last year. And I managed to play through 10 of the releases that released here in the United States from Trails in the Sky all the way up until Trails into Reverie. And I'll explain how I was able to do that in the span of three to four months. And in my general opinion, I think these are really great games. I like the stories, I like the characters, I like the world building in general. And in many ways, it almost feels like the MCU, but anime. And I definitely do anticipate the upcoming release, Trails Through Daybreak, though technically that game's already released in Japan. I'm talking more so the North American release, which comes out this July. And this is exactly what we're doing today. We're talking about Trails, we're talking about how I found out about the series, a little bit about the stories and where you should start, some gameplay elements here and there, and the graphics and music, of course. Just all that fun stuff, and let you guys know right now, even though I'm talking about another major RPG out there, that doesn't mean I'm banning Dragon Quest for any reasons. I still love the franchise, obviously some of the more recent videos have been a bit more on the negative side because of the mismanagement of the franchise thanks to Square Enix, and I'm definitely not going to be like people out there who claim to still like the franchise and they'll straddle people on because believing they'll eventually make a Dragon Quest video. Yeah, I'm not like that. But anyways, before we dive right in, you know what's even greater than the Trails games or even Dragon Quest? What's even greater is subscribing to That's Royal. Each and every day we're getting closer and closer to that 1,000 subscriber mark, so I really do appreciate it if you subscribe. So yeah, let's quickly talk about how I found out about the series, which is pretty uneventful when you think about it. Back in 2015, I remember some article out there from the PlayStation blog discussing upcoming games for the PlayStation 3. And I just thought, wait a minute, they're still releasing games on PS3 because people moved on to the PlayStation 4? And one of the games they mentioned was a game that was already been out in Japan for quite some time known as The Trails of Cold Steel. And I kind of just thought, is this some kind of ripoff of the Tales games and instead of calling it Tales, they call it Trails? And I didn't really think about it ever since. And then it wasn't until I think 2017 or 2018 that they ported the first Trails of Cold Steel game to PC. And I decided to pick it up and not touch it at all. It was kind of just one of those games that you buy for your backlog and eventually you start playing the games. That's basically what happened with Trails of Cold Steel. And I didn't really think about it until 2018, 2019 when I had some friends of mine start playing the Trails games and they considered themselves to be a part of this group called the Falcom Hive. And quick question, is the Falcom Hive still a thing? Because I remember that being such a big thing back in 2018 and, and now I don't hear anything about the Falcom Hive. But anyways, I got interested again with the Trails series and tried out Trails in the Sky because most people recommended it to me that that's where you should start. And quite honestly, the game didn't really grab me. Just based on the first hour I played, it just felt too slow for me and the plot didn't really seem like it was going anywhere in my opinion. And on top of that, around that same time I was also getting into the Dragon Quest games. So I just felt my time was better spent playing the Dragon Quest games over the Trails games. And I just didn't think about it. And I didn't think about Trails until 2023 when another friend of mine started playing the Trails games starting with Trails from Zero, seeing how he had a Nintendo Switch and he didn't have a PC that ran Windows. So again, I became interested in playing the Trails games, starting with Sky 1, seeing how I already owned the game, and I found this mod that added in Japanese voiceovers to the game. The Japanese voiceovers definitely did help me pull through Trails in the Sky, and I managed to beat it, and I immediately started playing Trails 2nd Chapter, and then Trails the 3rd, then Trails from Zero, then Trails to Azure, then Trails of Cold Steel, Cold Steel 2, Cold Steel 3, Cold Steel 4, and Trails into Reverie, and I'm currently slogging away with Nayuda. So yeah, that's how I got into the series. I would say it took some time to where I would just saw some article, didn't think much about it, to playing it later down the line and not really being grabbed by it, till now where I basically barrest on through all the games in the span of three to four months. And you might be wondering, if you are an aficionado of trails, that these games definitely take quite some time to beat. In many cases, a hundred hours at the very least. How was I able to play through 10 Trails games in the span of 4 months. And the answer is quite simple, I'm a fast reader and also in every single Trails game there's some kind of turbo mode which speeds up the game and allows me to play through the game a little bit more faster. Quite honestly, if I wasn't using the turbo mode, I probably will still be playing the Trails games, probably still be on Cold Steel 1 or 2. And that's your answer right there. And now moving on, let's quickly talk about anyone who's brand new to the Trail series or wants to get into this series, where exactly should you start? I would definitely recommend starting with the first Trails game because it's the first in the game and much like reading a book, you start with book one. But obviously not everyone has time to play over 100 hours of RPGs and they're not a fast reader like myself. And also on top of that, if you don't own a Windows-based PC or Linux or a Steam Deck, 
Your options are a lot more limited when playing on Switch or PlayStation, or hell even Xbox, seeing how you don't get any access to Trails games. Is it fine to start at a later game? And the answer is yes, but with an asterisk. Because the Trails games are broken up into different story arcs, in a sense. The Sky games focus on Estelle Bright, the Crossbow games focus on Lloyd Bannings, and the Coldsteel games focus on Reed Schwarzer. So keeping that in mind, I would recommend starting at the beginning of said story arc. If you're playing Lloyd Banning's games, you play Trail from Zero first. If you play Green Schwarzer games, you play Trails from Cold Steel 1 first. Don't start from Cold Steel 2, don't start from Azure, and you're playing Estelle Bright games, you don't start from Trail's second chapter. These games assume you played through the first games first, so you're definitely going to be lost if you play through the second games or what have you. Though despite that, I would also say, if you're not a fan of drawn out stories, these games definitely do take their time of introducing you to the worlds and the characters in the first games. As definitely the case with the first Trails in the Sky game, it definitely feels like filler in some cases, and you don't feel like a story is going on until very late in the game. Though I would also argue the first games from the Crossbow games and Cold Steel try to do a better job of melding a storyline alongside introducing you to the world and characters. They still have that problem of trying to world build and introducing you to the characters more than trying to push along a story. But if you're a fan of them, you're definitely going to be right at home playing through the Trails games. And definitely once you beat through the first games and you move on to their second games like Cold Steel 2, Azure, or Second Chapter, or hell even Cold Steel 4, things start going really quick. The story keeps on progressing, all this crazy stuff happens, and, and all the characters you're introduced to the first games definitely feel like they have their time to shine in the second game. It's definitely great stuff overall, and also if you're a fan of anime, there's definitely some anime tropes in these games that definitely will get you very interested, especially with some of the characters out there. Wink wink nut nudge. Though like I said, despite the fact that the first games do take their time of world building and what have you, you'll definitely be rewarded when you play through the second games. It's definitely not like Dragon Quest, Final Fantasy, or Persona where they only really have one game to introduce you to the world and characters and build up this big story. The Trails games definitely do take their time of world building first and then going through all the crazy shit in the second games. Because they're allowed to because they have this long overarching story. Like I said, they feel like the MCU of anime and you definitely do feel it when you play through the later Trails games. And now moving on, let's talk about the gameplay of the game. Because these are indeed turn-based RPGs, but with a bit of a twist. The best comparison I can give are some Western RPGs like Divinity Original Sin 2 or Baldur's Gate 3. Though a little bit more simplistic, as battles do take place on a map, and they kind of feel like tactics battles when it comes down to it. Though not by much, they still feel more turn-based RPG in the traditional sense, rather than a tactical RPG. As you move characters in a map or field to attack enemies, use magic, or use special abilities to take down the enemies. And while I say they don't really add a crazy amount of depth when it comes down to the gameplay to make it feel different from something like your traditional base RPG like Dragon Quest, I would say the differences in the Trails games when it comes down to gameplay mechanics are different enough to have its own identity. And of course, with each passing game, they add in brand new mechanics into the game, whether it is a team-up move, or being able to link attacks with your partners, or all-out attacks, or taking down an enemy on the fields because they're weaker than you. They definitely do try to iterate and evolve with each passing game. And another thing unique to the Trails games is the magic system, as when you level up, you actually don't learn brand new magic spells. You learn them by getting these things called Orbinates. And in the Sky games and the Crossbell games, if you combine certain Orbinates, they can actually help you build stronger spells. While the Cold Steel games onward, they basically just give you the spell itself via an Orbinate. And I have to say, when it comes down to the Orbinate mechanic, it's definitely well thought out. When it comes down to combining certain Orbinates to get you special spells, or in the Cold Steel games, figuring out a good setup for your main team. And as for special abilities, much like many other RPGs, as you level up, you learn brand new abilities for your main characters. And these are definitely my way of attacking enemies. Because some of these abilities have attacks that attack all enemies, some of them have a chance to crit, allow me to chain up attacks in the later games. And when you fill up your meter, you can do a super attack that can take down all the enemies, which is pretty nice. And of course, like I said, with each passing game, they add in brand new things into the games to spice up the gameplay. But these are just some of the few things that do pop up in my mind at this moment in time. And now moving on, let's talk about the gameplay loop, as these are relatively linear games. They're chapter-based, as you start in one location, do some side quests and the main mission, and then after you're done with that chapter, you move on to a brand new location and basically do the same thing all over again. And in some cases, some games are a bit different where they let you revisit old areas. But for a majority of the games, they have you visiting one location and doing your thing there. 
and you feel like you're missing some things, don't worry, these games have New Game Plus, which allows you to replay the game at a higher level and what have you. They basically give you a much more easier time collecting everything on your second go. And speaking of the side quests, there's a lot of side quests in these games. They can range from something small like a fetch quest, or finding an enemy on the fields, or they can be a little bit more elaborate by finding clues of a missing item. But whatever the case may be, you're spending some time doing some side quests, and then later on you do the main story. And what's the benefit of doing side quests? Well, other than getting some extra goodies, you also gain these points that allows you to rank up. And ranking up gives you some extra goodies as well. And they do affect how the story is told later on. And I do find the gameplay loop to be overall enticing, because you also get a nice little story when you play through the side quests. And aside from that, there's also other activities you can do in the trail schemes, whether it's gambling, fishing, cooking, playing children's card games, and even playing Puyo Puyo on top of that. Yeah, these games have it all when it comes down to activities you can do in an RPG. And moving on to the presentation, the Sky games and the Crossbow games have a unique graphical presentation to where characters are based off of pre-rendered sprites, while all the environments are 3D. And then later on, moving from the Cold Steel games onward, they have a full-on 3D presentation. And I have to say, the early games have a unique style to them because of the fact that the character models are pre-rendered sprites. And the Cold Steel games onward, at least the early ones, definitely do look pretty rough. They look like typical anime games in a sense. While the later games like Cold Steel 3 onward definitely look a lot better in my opinion, though it was a little bit of stiff presentation when it comes down to how the characters move. Though at the very least, those games definitely look pretty presentable. Unlike some other games from another franchise I talk about. And as for the music, man. If we were talking about some top tier GRPG music, I have to give my hat off to the Trails games, or just Falcom in general, they make some damn good music. Whether it's jazz-like music, rock and roll, heavy metal, EDM, classical style music, whatever style they do, they just take it in strides and just make some top tier music in my opinion. And regarding Trails, here's some examples here. Now for all some top tier music. And before we end off today's video, I just want to mention again where you can play these games. Like I said, you can play all the games on PC. Definitely another franchise can learn from the Trail series. And like I said, you can also play on Switch on PS4, but your options are a little bit limited as you can only play the Crossbow games, the Cold Steel games, and Reverie. And eventually the upcoming Trails Through Daybreak. But overall, like I said, the Trails games are definitely some fun games overall. I'm definitely anticipating the upcoming release Trails Through Daybreak as right now this is my most anticipated game of this year unless Triangles 3 HD 2D comes out. And I know for sure with Trails for Daybreak I'm going to have a good time. But anyways, if you played through the Trails games, let me know what you think about them down in the comments below. If you never played one but you're now curious because my video influenced you to play through the Trails games, let me know down in the comments below again. And also, don't forget to leave this video a like and subscribe as well. And if you want to see more videos, definitely do check out these videos here. I personally think you'll enjoy them. See you guys on the next one. Take care. Well, actually, before I leave, I just want to say, F*** Stellux Josh. Terrible-ass romance story there. Okay, see you guys on the next one. Take care.